Hey guys, Zen Guardian here, and today I wanted to talk about something I think every hardcore Destiny player is kind of wondering right now, and that's the question, is Destiny 2 dying? This is also a question that somewhat confuses me, given we're only a month and change into content as of this recording, and also considering the mostly positive reviews and feedback the game was getting at launch. So in this video, I wanted to break down basically everything I can think of with this topic, and hopefully give you guys some insight into why I think we're even at this point. Surprisingly enough, I wanted to start with what is kind of known as a meme at this point, being Deej's endgame friendship comment at the end of a Bungie Weekly update. Now, in my opinion, kind of to sum this whole thing up, this was a comment that was kind of put in the wrong place at the wrong time. Everybody's criticism up to this point of this weekly update was that there is no endgame. A lot of people were very frustrated with the raid and how that turned out as far as endgame. Uh, I know myself, I made an entire video about being kind of frustrated and kind of done with trial of the nine and how that's not really satisfying my end game hunger and that grind that I crave with destiny and then obviously the most recent end game was the iron banner and a lot of people almost the entire community was basically against the current iron banner and want to see a change and want it to be a little bit more grindy and want things to be a little bit different within that space as well and so when Deej came out and he said that the true end game within a destiny game is the friendships that you make and the people that you bond with it kind of put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths and then just a couple of hours later he kind of backtracked on it and made it seem like it was something that was just a personal comment and something that he wanted to put out there just for all of us to kind of recognize as a community and i can definitely respect that you know i've made a lot of friends playing destiny there is no denying that i've made a lot of friends playing many games but that really wasn't the time to put that comment out there and that really wasn't the time when your entire community is looking for an answer to something to kind of give a personal note as to exactly how you're experiencing or exactly how you're finding end game within destiny and so i have nothing but massive respect for deej and of course i enjoy the fact that he is our community manager but that was something that really rubbed everybody, including myself, the wrong way. And I personally think that it was kind of intentional and it was kind of something where it was like, you know, we're being very straight up and honest when we're saying that the end game within our game and one of the goals that we want to have is to create long lasting friendships that go on for Destiny and for future Bungie games and stuff like that. And like I said, I can respect that as a point, but at a time where everybody is kind of looking for an answer as to where your end game is and to why it feels so lackluster, putting that out there really made it difficult for everybody to trust in what is coming now the next topic of interest which goes hand in hand with what we were just discussing is the extremely lackluster end game content systems we have in place right now now if you've been playing destiny 2 since launch this is most likely where you're at you're most likely grinding the raid trials of the nine iron banner or the nightfall to kind of get all of the exotics and all the gear that you're looking for in hopes of kind of setting yourself up to be different and being as prepared and as awesome as you can be within the end game and there's really nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with the drop. There's really nothing wrong with uh, the actual act of going and getting these things. The problem lies within the incentive. There really is no incentive to go and get any of these things or to go and raid a hundred times or to go flawless or to do any of these things because the gear simply isn't unique and doesn't do anything else that other gear that you can just randomly get from an engram and that is really what the problem is. That's really where a lot of people are frustrated. Now I made an entire video talking about how going flawless within Trials of the Nine is is really really lackluster and there really is no reason for one person to keep doing it over and over again other than farming for stats now if you want to check that video out well, it'll be linked down below and an i card above so you guys can click that and go check that out but essentially that video sums up how a lot of people feel about a lot of the end game within destiny 2 now again that can kind of be summed up as a problem with destiny 2 as a whole and i get that but I think it's really important to talk about it when you're talking about Endgame because this is the reason we go and do these things. Now I wanna take us back into Rise of Iron with Wrath of the Machine. That raid was incredible both at a gameplay standpoint and at a loot standpoint because I feel like it was one of the most satisfying raids to do and complete. And then when you got the raid gear and you got the weapons, these were weapons that were really good within the raid. Think about guns like Chaos Dogma. 
Think about armor pieces that gave you faster sprint when you had relics and stuff like that. These are the reasons we wanna go and do these things and these are the incentives for us to go and grind things out. Now, if you're talking about Trials of Osiris back in D1, when you had the Doctrine at the Lighthouse or when you had certain gear that gave you certain perks that really helped make your Guardian stand out within PvP, especially Trials PvP, these were things that people wanted to get to improve their game. Now, when you're talking about a Destiny player, I find that most of us are put into categories. And the first category is, are you a PvE or a PvP guy? A lot of my audience is PvP, and so a lot of us play Trials, a lot of us are in Iron Banner, that kind of thing. But if you're on somebody else's channel who does a lot of PvE stuff, then maybe you're more of a Raider, or maybe you're more of somebody who likes Endgame Strikes like the Nightfall. Now, when you go and do these things, and you're getting loot for these things, you don't want to randomly get a piece of loot that you just automatically discard because it doesn't pertain to you so for instance if i'm playing trials of the nine and i get a loot drop for a set of gloves that doesn't really work out for pvp but works really well in pve well, that kind of creates a problem for me because for me, I'm looking for stuff that's going to better me in the end game that I enjoy. So for Trials of the Nine, I want stuff that's going to benefit me within PVP, specifically heavy, very competitive PVP like Countdown and Survival. But if you're in the raid, you don't necessarily want those same things. You want things that are going to increase your overall game from within PVE. And so when you have a raid like Wrath of the Machine where it's giving you stuff that's really good within that raid, you're not gonna necessarily use those things in PVP because that's not where they shine. They shine in the raid. And same thing, you're not gonna necessarily run a doctrine of passing within Wrath of the Machine. Why? Because that's not really where it belongs. It belongs within a PVP guardian's hand killing other guardians. And that's more or less my overall explanation as to why Endgame feels super lackluster across the board. If you have drops that are good for different aspects of the game, that's great, but you need to make sure that they're filling that specific role and that the people that are enjoying that content are getting the loot that they want because otherwise it's just scrapped to them and it means nothing and it's almost like it's a waste of time. And so I know that there's a lot of other things that you can talk about with the Endgame. I know a lot of people don't enjoy the token system and I guess we can kind of break that down a little bit here as well for me the token system isn't the worst thing to ever happen Datto did a video recently talking about it and I thought it was really enlightening because the way that he put it was essentially that the tokens are basically reputations that you go and turn in they don't automatically roll in like they used to now it's kind of a lot easier for you to grind up another character because you can transfer those tokens over put that on another character or a new character that you're creating and then just automatically grind that person up which I do like now the only problem that I have with tokens, and it's something that I think a lot of people actually don't like, is that you'll get tokens instead of getting drops. And so within the raid, you might open a chest and get nothing but tokens. After you beat something or after you beat an encounter, you might get nothing but tokens. And typically within Destiny raids, we're super used to having that pool of engrams drop and fly out of a chest or, you know, drop on the side of your screen and you're getting your exotics and you're getting your legendaries and it's all good and it feels like a slot machine and, you know, all these things happen. In. and for a destiny player those are exciting times those are things that are really cool those are things that we enjoy and maybe bungie thought you know tone down the colors all over the screen or something i don't know but tokens aren't the worst thing to happen in the game and honestly i would like to see them evolve i would like to see more things happen with them but give us our drops back you know if we open a chest throw a couple engrams on the ground or whatever and i know that that does still happen but i think that that's kind of one of the reasons why people don't like tokens uh people just want that visualization a little bit better for me that's kind of the overall explanation as to why the end game feels super lackluster i think that things like the iron banner obviously need change and trials of the nine needs a little bit more of a push to make people want to go flawless and stuff like that but again i think the incentive when it comes down to the gear and things being unique and things being specialized from whatever it is you're trying to do I think that's really where people's problem lies. Now, the next and the final thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to this question of Destiny dying or not is the current DLC structure of a game like this and also comparing it to some of its competition. Now, this is a topic that I've wanted to talk about for an extremely long time. 
and I never really found the video to kind of put it all in one where I'm not sounding super ranty and I'm not sounding super complainy. But this is something that I think is extremely important and uh, I think this is probably for me the most important part of this entire video. And so I'm going to talk about three games here being Destiny 2's main competition. Now you may agree, you may disagree whether they're actually competition with this game or not, but they are all within the first person or shooter space and they all kind of share the same element of needing to grind out and really dedicate your yourself to the game's ecosystems and stuff like that. So the first game is Rainbow Six Siege, then Overwatch, and now Fortnite and PUBG. All of these games have a DLC structure and a structure of selling the game to you that is very different from how Destiny sells the game to you. So when you're buying Destiny, you're buying Destiny the base game, and of course you're going to have to buy a season pass, and you know that when it comes year three, you'd have spent at least $200 on this game, which is a lot of money. It's a lot to dip into a game. It's a lot for content it's a lot for updates now when you look at a game like rainbow six siege which a lot of you guys know i took a long break from destiny to play rainbow six siege but if you look at a game like rainbow six siege you buy rainbow six you buy just the game and then after that all you have to do is grind up and you can get everything else. The game does offer a season pass, but it doesn't have any real incentive other than getting the brand new DLC operators early. Other than that, you can get everything else in the game by simply playing the game. Same thing with Overwatch. You buy Overwatch and essentially you have to grind up to get the rest of the stuff that you want, but everything else in the game comes free. And then of course, games like Fortnite and PUBG, Fortnite is a free to play game where the only things that you buy in that game are cosmetic or things that kind of buff out your character and then PUBG kind of follows the same suit now destiny again you're paying a lot of money to get all of the updates and all of the stuff that you want to get and again Bungie packs a lot of this stuff in as updates that come with DLC so you won't even see some of this stuff unless you buy the first and second expansions which really really hurts player base and really hurts a lot of people that want to continue to play the game for a long period of time especially with friends now i don't know about you guys but every group has that one or two friends that's never up to date you have somebody who bought the game when you guys bought the game and uh you know he was playing with you and everything was good but come that first dlc drop or come that first major update he's nowhere to be seen but then a month or two later he comes back and he's like hey what's going on in this game i've been feeling like playing this game let's get on let's jump in and you're like yeah man the game's great everything's cool but you have to dish out $40 for a season pass so that you can play with me he's like oh man I don't have $40 right now I'll have to wait till my next check then that next check comes he doesn't have it next check comes he doesn't have it or whatever maybe I'm just hanging out with a bunch of broke friends but either way when you're talking about a game like Rainbow Six or Overwatch or whatever when he bought that original game that sealed him in that allowed him to continue to play content and allowed him to continue to enjoy the game with you past the launch of the game and with Destiny 2 it's simply not like that and I think that that really hurts the game now I know that Activision is the company that publishes Destiny and all of these decisions aren't necessarily Bungie's. I totally get that. And I also really do enjoy Activision's games, but they kind of have to move with the industry when we're talking about selling games. And especially if Deej wants to put a comment out like that, we're talking about creating long lasting friendships. Well, the asterisk there is long lasting friendships as long as those friends have enough money to buy the DLC and continue to play the relevant content of that game with me. And uh, that's really something that I think hurts this game in more ways than a lot of people really even like to realize now obviously destiny is packing in a lot of content with their dlc a lot of updates and a lot of things that obviously take man hours and obviously take a lot of time to create and so i understand that they kind of have to charge for something but if we're talking about keeping player bases high and keeping people invested in the game long term having a more free form dlc structure where people don't necessarily have to continuously dish out funds to stay relevant within the game i think that's what will keep player bases super high that's what will keep people interested when we're talking about the long term and so when i look at a game like fortnite that's free and i can continuously play that game with all of my friends broke or not it really is an incentive to go in and play that game as much as i want because we can play forever i can play now i can play next year and nothing's gonna change with destiny 2 it's not like that things are going to change money is going to be involved your friend that plays with you all the time that just doesn't have the same amount of money as you that can't get on on that Saturday night when you guys want to grind out all night because of that well then he's gonna go play a game like Fortnite he's gonna go play a game like Rainbow Six he's gonna go get invested in something else 
and maybe that player doesn't return. Maybe we have players that play the game for two or three hours a day or 20 hours a week or whatever, but then that first DLC drops or that new content drops, but it costs a bunch of money. Maybe they go jump off to another game and go figure out uh, some other system or some other end game that they enjoy. I know for me, I know a lot of you guys know when I went and played Rainbow Six, I ended up getting super invested in that game. I ended up wanting to grind up and rank and, and care about my KD and care about my stats and getting better at the game. That game has an extremely wide learning curve and uh, it takes a long time to master all the maps and mechanics and ops and all that stuff and not to get too rainbow six here but it's one of those things where it took me out of destiny's realm and it was really hard to get back in and when i was playing that game as hard as i was i found that being able to play with my friends all the time and not have to worry about you know the dlc structure and stuff like that it really did take a weight off my shoulders and it really did create a long lasting relationship with that game without getting too ranty on that subject I think when you're talking about if a game is dying or not or if a game can be long lasting I think that that's a very important subject and one that I think a lot of destiny youtubers and a lot of people that are very fixated on this one game tend to kind of just breeze over because it's something that we're just used to and uh, again I realize that money is involved here Bungie has to make money Activision has to make money I do get that but the industry is moving in a completely different direction and I feel like Activision with their main shooters being Call of Duty and Destiny are kind of being left behind in that right. I mean, Call of Duty has suffered heavily because of this. A lot of people have realized, especially recently, not only are you paying for the base game of Call of Duty and Destiny, but then you're paying for the season pass. And on top of that, you're also paying for microtransactions and loot boxes and bright engrams and all that stuff. And it really does impact the player's experience. And it really does impact the overall sense of the game and how everybody kind of feels about it. And so with that being said, is Destiny 2 dying? Right now, I think it's in another low period. As Destiny veterans, we all know about content droughts. We all know about feeling like there isn't enough to do. We all know about this feeling that we're having right now. And if I'm not mistaken, I thought that Bungie brought on Vicarious Visions and other studios to help with these kinds of things to keep things fresh and to keep things going and to keep new content popping up you know on a more regular basis uh so i'm not sure if they've got more stuff down the pipeline before dlc hits but we're still two months off from our first dlc drop and we're all stuck with almost nothing to do is destiny 2 dying again i think it's in a lull period but i think a lot more eyebrows have been raised and i think a lot more people are taking notice as to some of the stuff that this game is doing right now and i think that it is a great game i'm extremely happy of how destiny 2 has turned out mechanics wise feature wise i'm very happy a lot of the creature comforts and stuff like that have been really positive and i think that there's a lot of positive things to say about the game it's also great to have such a booming and bustling community to have behind it and that's really where destiny is favored for me is is within the community other games can have extremely toxic communities and stuff like that and there really is no place like the destiny community i think that this game especially destiny to can and will die if Bungie doesn't figure out a way to kind of make these things more transparent to us, give us an end game that really makes us happy and uh, pleases the veteran players because things will trickle down to the casuals. And in my opinion, in a game like this, you can't develop for the casual first. You really can't because then you get stuck in systems like these where the veterans are super ticked off and have nothing to do. And so that's what the casuals hear about. And then nobody ever really gets what they want. And so I think Bungie has to reignite their passion for their hardcore base give us more of what we want give us those really exciting exotics give us that really powerful end game give us that stuff that we crave we'll trickle that down to the casuals and then everybody will have a better experience overall but this is a very long video this was not expected at all but i ended up becoming super passionate as i always do and started getting a little lost in conversation but please let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video do you think destiny 2 is dying a pretty flat and easy question do you think that destiny 2 is dying do you think that this game can come out of this hole that it's in right now do you think bungie will ever truly listen to its veteran players and give them the end game that they're looking for and that grind that they're looking for that satisfies us all let me know everything that you have in a comment down below if you did enjoy this video please hit it with a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications if you're new with that being said it's been zen hey and i'm out